So what was happening with traditional cosmetics right now? If you think about lipstick, uh, so I have red lipstick, my mom has red lipstick, my grandma has red lipstick. So the functionality of cosmetics has been the same. We highlight or we hide some part of our body. So with this idea that I call it beauty technology, uh, what I do is I extend the functionality of cosmetics. So they are still done for keeping you pretty, but now with kind of a superpower. So my name is Katia Vega. I am an assistant professor at the design department here at UC Davis. My research is about how we could embed technology into our body surface. So for that, I was creating different interfaces like hair, skin, or fingernail interfaces that could make our skin as an interactive platform. I think that I was always curious about these girls going to the nail salon and spending one or two hours doing their nails. And so I was wondering, like, if we are already uh, investing all this time, why we don't embed technology? The first idea of all this concept of beauty technology was the conductive makeup. So I was thinking about how we blink. And for that, I was using fake eyelashes as a way we could put an eyelashes on the top and eyelashes on the bottom part. And each time you blink, we, with a circuit that is connected to a hairband, you, we could detect blinking. The fingernails project, I call it Beauty Tech Nails. And we were using RFIDs. RFIDs is the same technology you use for paying the metro or paying Starbucks or opening the door of your office. All these cards that we have in the wallet, most of them, they have these RFIDs. But I was thinking like, what if we could have technology on your fingertip. I am from Peru. I'm from Lima. I study computer science and then I moved to Brazil. I stayed there for seven years. I did my master's and my PhD there. Also in between I went to Hong Kong to the arts department and then I went to MIT Media Lab to also continue creating these technologies. Most of the projects that I do is not exactly for a specific problem. Uh, it's more of creating a solution that could be enabling different projects. Uh, the hair project, uh, we call it hair wear. So this hair is actually a fake hair that we use a chemical process for metallize that. So now it still looks like hair, but it's conductive. So for example, you could touch your hair and you could send a message, you touch your hair and you could record a conversation, you could touch your hair and you could even take a selfie or uh, even if you think about more in a safety or security aspect of that, we could think about touching the hair and sending your location if you are in danger. The Dermal Abyss is a, a collaboration project between MIT Media Lab and Harvard Medical School. So we use a uh, skin and with that we were injected using a traditional tattoo gun and injecting that biosensors and making that react. So we were working with different biosensors like pH or sodium or glucose. So imagine that you have diabetes, your glucose levels go up and down. So you could see in your tattoo that your glucose levels are changing and when you will need more insulin. So it's a, it's a way that we could explore how we could read information that is inside of your body and you usually don't have access to. I think I have that the motivation of doing research instead of creating products. So for me it's like this privilege I have to wake up and thinking about what I wanted to do next and what I wanted to create next. And that's how I see as my role as a researcher and what I will be creating next.